everyone, Genesis Writer here with Genesis Inbox, episode number three. If you're unfamiliar with this series, it's kind of a vloggity thing where I answer your questions, either from the comments section or from Facebook or Twitter or any questions that I've received that I feel like I can do a better job and do better justice to um, in a more personal way through a uh, vloggity-ish video um, instead of just giving you a typed kind of impersonal answer. So this episode of Genesis Inbox is actually a little bit special. I do have a of questions to make a next Genesis Inbox video, but a person asked me a bunch of specific questions for a Halo documentary they're doing, and since I don't know whether that documentary is actually going to go through or not, I will leave those details out for now. If I know anything about the documentary, I'll put it down in the description or the link to the video when it actually comes out. For now, I don't know much about it, but I did want to answer this person's list of questions in detail. And these questions are going to cover a lot of little things. Um, you can look down in the directory in the description in the About section below this video to click on any timestamp to listen to any answer I have to any of these questions. Maybe you don't want to listen to every single question. Go ahead and click on a question you want to hear me answer and the video will skip right to that part. So let's just jump right into it here. Uh, his first question is, when did you start playing Halo consistently? And that N word there is very important because I did start playing Halo, uh, I think around the age of 15 or 16, when my parents allowed me to play through the campaign due to the fact that it was M rated and there was language and gore. That being said, Halo is obviously one of the more mild M-rated games out there for sure, but um, that's just how uh, they decided to do things, and uh, that is when I started playing the campaigns of Halo 1 and 2, but I think this question is more getting at when did I start playing Halo multiplayer online consistently, and that would have to be during the late days of Halo 3, and the early days of Halo Reach. Uh, right before Halo Reach came out, I actually, I believe it was the day before, got the final achievement to max out all my gamer score or achievements in Halo 3, which I think is 1,750 if I'm not mistaken. And uh, some of the achievements are very difficult to get. But when Halo Reach came out, I started taking the multiplayer a lot more uh, seriously because it was on the start of a game and I felt like I had an edge. When I got Halo 3, the game had been out for a year or so and there was a lot of people out there who were really good. So Halo Reach is when I really started playing consistently. The next question reads, what do you enjoy the most about Halo? Now, this can be answered in two ways and I, I think I, I speak for a lot of people who play Halo when I say this. There's the aspect of the campaign, and there's the aspect of the multiplayer when answering this question. Because I personally, besides maybe Half-Life and a few other game first-person shooter series, I personally believe that Halo has one of the best first-person shooter storylines that I've ever seen in a video game. Now, please understand, first-person shooter storylines. If you're talking about Mass Effect, obviously Mass Effect beats the living crud out of Halo in terms of a storyline, but... Halo, for a shooter, is insane in terms of its storyline, so I'd be lying if I said that the storyline didn't hold a very special place in my heart. But the reason why I keep coming back to Halo, the reason why I keep coming back to play Halo, and not other games, um, specifically the online portion of the game, is because it takes skill to be good at the game. It, the learning curve is higher than other games, and something that I'm always very fond of in Halo is the shield aspect of the game that allows you to essentially get away or at least think through your death as you're dying and go, how could I have played this differently? You know, what could I have done to do better? Um, that sort of thing. And um, to be honest, like that, that constant idea that I can be improving and getting better and there's little strategies and new things you're finding out and Honestly, being able to share and explain and help other people also get better at the game and maybe um, bring them into a lobby or experience like a match or two where people are calling out and communicating to win the game. A lot of people haven't really experienced that on a mature level. Um, they kind of play matchmaking really, really, really 
really casually. And um, to me personally, that kind of gameplay has no, I have no interest in that. I want, I play to win. Um, and, you know, I, I expect my teammates to do the same and we can have fun while we're doing that, of course, but I ultimately play to win. Um, and that is what I enjoy the most about Halo is the fact that the multiplayer is so skilled and that winning is, is a, a feat and that I can help other people learn how to win and do better at the game. This is kind of a general answer to your question. I apologize. That's just the first thing that came to mind, so I'm just trying to be honest. Next question. What is your favorite Halo moment? I have a lot of special moments and memories from Halo, so I, I am not going to pick just one because I don't want to pick just one at the risk of saying that the campaign was my favorite thing or something like that. Um, getting all the achievements in Halo 3 was insane. Getting all the achievements in Halo Reach was unbelievable. Um, getting a capture the flag uh, level 50 in Halo 4 was extremely rewarding. Um, There's a lot of things I could pull from, from being in the campaign in Halo 3 on Legendary to um, you know, beating Combat Evolved, Solo Legendary. Um, these things are not easy, and there's a lot of special memories I have from the game. But to be honest, in multiplayer, I've made so many memories with friends and, and gotten to where I enjoy the game at such a high level that that's probably my favorite uh, moment or moments are the ones that occur in multiplayer that really can't be repeated, um, whether it's that sick multi-kill or uh, it's that insane teamwork and communication you had with your friend at this one point. Um, I find those to be those standout moments um, that a lot of people don't mention, and those are those are oftentimes my favorite moments. And I could, they're they they're kind of infinite, so it's really hard to pick one. The next question reads. What are you most excited for in Halo 5 Guardians? And uh, this is, again, a kind of complicated question, but I'll try to answer it pretty succinctly here. Um, what I am excited for in Halo 5 Guardians is a game that is pushing towards other games in the sense that it's trying to be modern in its gameplay, but still trying to be Halo. Um, I'd say that Halo 5 so far from 3 for 3 is the best I've seen at trying to compromise. What I mean by that is uh, it's, it's not perfect at all. I mean, I played the Halo 5 beta and I had a lot of problems with it. But there's a lot of evidence I see of uh, essentially the 3 for 3 team trying to make the game modern and trying to bring in the competitive audience and bring them back into Halo while still making the game playable and competitive to some degree. Um, I think when you add things like Sprint, obviously the game is automatically going to be less skilled. But um, what I'm most excited for Halo 5 Guardians is uh, the bigger player count, you know, 12v12, the better shot registration, and dedicated servers that will hopefully eliminate a huge amount of lag. In fact, if, if that's not the case, I'm going to be really, really disappointed. Um, and I'm excited to be playing a Halo experience that hopefully a lot of people are going to get behind and hopefully a lot of people are going to continue playing into the future. Um, and just the newness of it, to be honest. Like, there's there's a lot of things um, about older Halo games that um, I wouldn't say I'm tired of, but Halo the Master Chief Collection has just made me uh, realize that um, it's time to move on to something different. Um, and this also factors into the part of the reason why I haven't been uploading much content uh, recently, but that's a whole other uh, spectrum. I'm sure I will when Halo 5 uh, comes out. So the next question is, what do you have to say about the new Warzone game mode in Halo 5 Guardians? That's a very timely question. Um, the Warzone game mode in Halo 5 Guardians, for those of you who don't know, is a 12v12 objective slash slayer mode. And what I mean by that is you can get kills by killing enemy players, you can get kills by you can get points by killing enemy AI, and you can win the game by taking out the enemy team's core. You can only attack the enemy team's core if you have control of all three bases on the map. And you control bases and get points that way as well. That's a really uh, freaking <laughs> straightforward uh, description of Warzone, but it's 12v12 dedicated servers. The fact that there's going to be no split screen in Halo 5 Guardians means that there's going to be no guest players running around and freaking screwing things up. Um, I apologize to those of you who are looking forward to split screen for the campaign, but um, as far as Warzone, I think it looks awesome. What I'm worried about is the fact that uh, there's no Forge 
for Warzone. And if there's no Forge, I am suspecting that there may not be other features like spectator mode or theater mode for Warzone. Which, if that, if that is the case, which I don't know if it's the case or not, but if that is the case, that is a major catastrophic mistake. And if Forge is not eventually added to Warzone, that is also going to be a huge mistake. What I like about Warzone is the fact that the games are long and the possibilities are endless and there are finally more players in a dedicated server realm. This is something that Halo has not... Uh, this is one, one of, again, the areas where I see 343 really taking the initiative because they're recognizing that from Halo 3 to Halo Reach to Halo 4 and especially in Halo the Master Chief Collection, Big Team Battle is the most popular playlist overall in general. Okay, please take that with a grain of salt. In general, the population numbers, especially after the game has died down in population, tend to say that Big Team Battle is one of, one of if not the most popular playlist. And many of you actually may be surprised at this. Um, I'm not saying that other playlists don't temporarily take control. I'm just saying that Big Team Battle is here to say and Warzone is an example of 343 actually seeing that and responding to that. And that is very, very smart. It is also very smart that Warzone is the only game mode where you will be able to actually use your weapon modifications that actually change weapon damage, weapon accuracy, that sort of thing. That is the only game mode where you'll be able to use those. Of course, your cosmetic armor pieces and stuff that you unlock via rec packs and everything of that nature, you'll be able to use those in other playlists as well, but not things that actually change the game. Only things that cosmetically change your appearance will you be able to use in other competitive playlists. That is also a ridiculously smart play. So, there's a lot of positives I have to say about Warzone. I think that some things are way overpowered, some things are way underpowered. But again, what I'm reading is that 343 has put the options in place to be able to make uh, very timely and quick updates to the game, which is something that was lacking in Halo the Master Chief Collection, which I read up a lot on, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, but Halo 5 seems to be very different in that aspect, and I even saw some of this during the beta, which was really kind of cool. So I'm excited for how the mode evolves and how 343 takes community feedback to make this into something completely and totally different that we haven't seen in Halo before. I think that game modes like Invasion from Halo Reach are underrated and really they are left alone a little bit too much. And so I'm finally glad to see 343 taking initiative on a place that has a lot of players in it and making it finally into something that seems really worthwhile and something that I'm probably going to default to playing late at night every single night I play Halo 5 after I'm burn myself out another playlist or whatever. So the next question is when did you realize the competitive Halo scene existed? Thoughts. Now this question for those of you who don't know is specifically referring to competitive meaning you're playing Halo at tournaments and you're getting money for placing well. Okay, many people don't realize this, and even the person asking me this set of questions actually accidentally called me a professional Halo player. Um, that is not true, that is not correct, so I want to spend a little bit of time here uh, addressing that. Um, professional stands for pro, basically. I am not a pro Halo player. I am not anything close to a pro Halo player, and I'll, let me explain why. A professional Halo player is someone who places inside the top 16 at multiple 4v4 tournaments and gets money for doing so. And arguably speaking, especially with the Halo Championship Series, you could even say they need to place inside the top 8 and win money in 4v4 tournaments. Um, I'd say that this definition uh, mainly revolves around the fact that 1v1s and free-for-alls can be very random um, in, to a certain degree um, if they are not conducted properly and are not conducted on the right maps. So many people in Halo consider 4v4 to be the ultimate test of communication and skill because it actually makes you communicate with your teammates and it makes you have to work with other people, which is a really big skill. Uh, that is what a pro Halo player is. That's my definition. I've heard Gandhi say that's his definition and Walshi has a lot of thoughts on that as well. And uh, that's what I'm talking about. So uh, the question asks, when do you realize the competitive Halo scene existed? Thoughts. I realized it existed 
in Halo 3. Um, a little bit after I got Halo 3, I started hearing about um, MLG tournaments. And I, I want to say that MLG was actually um, in Halo 3 in many different ways. And what, what I mean by that, I know MLG was in Halo 3. What I mean by that is that Bungie advertised MLG a little bit inside the game. And I want to say that's how I actually caught on and started watching Major League Gaming tournaments. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, Major League Gaming dropped Halo uh, after one Halo 4 tournament for very obvious reasons, to me personally at least. And they are now going to re-pick up back, re pick up Halo again, which I'm very excited about. And they've kind of signed on to the contract, uh, contract of the $1 million Halo World Championship prize pool, which is totally flipping awesome, and I'm really happy to say that. Um, but that's when I realized that the competitive scene exists, and I started watching these tournaments online, and to be frankly honest, watching these live-streamed events and tournaments, even though it wasn't, I didn't have that great of a connection to watch them, it was far more captivating and entertaining than almost anything I had ever viewed up to that point. And it completely, in my mind, dominated in terms of sports. Um, I, I cannot even begin to tell you how much I could care less about football and baseball and what the frack ever it is, okay? Not to say that you can't be interested in something like that because obviously, you know, a lot of people are. But I, I literally avoid those topics because I'm not interested in them. I'm... I do not give a frack about them because Halo is way, way, way more interesting. And I feel like, key, I feel like while watching Halo, I'm honestly able to get better as a player at something, whereas if I'm going to watch a sport that I'm never going to actually play professionally, there is no point in doing that in my mind. And you have to realize I'm very logical where that comes down and a lot of people are not going to understand that and that's fine. I don't expect a lot of people to. That's just how my mind works. So when I watch these tournaments, I feel like I'm actually getting something from it and able to apply it to my gameplay, which I am. And I have learned so much from watching these professional players play. It's unbelievable, even though I don't necessarily play the competitive no radar playlists all the time. Um, I've consistently watched Halo tournaments since Halo 3, and when I actually went and live spectated uh, a Columbus, Ohio tournament where Team Instinct made of of Coach Towie, Ogre 2, Roy, I Got Your Pistola, and Lunchbox dominated the tournament, I believe dropping one game or dropping no games in Halo Reach. Uh, that was when I became a really true fan of all those players of that team, and that's why I'm really a fan of Evil Geniuses now. I feel like they're going to really do well in Halo 5, hopefully. And I love the competitive aspect of Halo ever since then. And it's been really close to my heart. I could go into a lot more detail on this, but I'll kind of leave it there for now because it's a long topic I could go on and on about. So the last question is, do you think Halo 5 is going to be the most competitive game yet to be released? And I hope this is talking about Halo games to be released. And this is an absolute no. I have no idea how anyone would think that a Halo game that adds Sprint is going to be the most competitive Halo game yet. Now, yes, 343 has come out and, and said verbatim that you're going to be able to turn off in custom games all the Spartan abilities, and I have to assume that Sprint is one of those Spartan abilities. Ground Pound, Spartan Dash, Thruster Pack, you're going to be able to automatically turn all those off in a game type. My personal opinion, while we are going to see these first few tournaments be with uh, Sprint and uh, Thruster Pack and other things of that nature, my opinion is that it is only a matter of time until these things are removed from competitive game types for money. There are multiple reasons for this that I could go into a lot more detail, but it is very, very obvious to me, especially when you're watching a game like Counter-Strike, for example, if the game is leaps and bounds uh, more skilled and takes way more skill than games like Call of Duty, which are far more based on uh, your reaction time than your communication. I'm not saying communication doesn't exist because it absolutely does. I'm just saying that the dynamic is a lot more swayed towards 
your hand-eye coordination than it is towards your communication or thought process, in my personal opinion. And I believe I'm correct when I say that. So Halo 5, adding these other features that speed up the gameplay and make the gameplay faster, that doesn't make the gameplay more competitive. It just makes the gameplay hopefully more interesting to watch and more fast-paced and hopefully more interesting to play. And hopefully it'll bring you know, newer newcomers into the Halo scene. And I'm kind of saying hopefully here because 343 is really crossing their fingers on this one. And I think that the gamble will ultimately pay off because there's a lot of, I mean, again, there's a lot of positive things I see 343 doing, like three free DLC packs. There's going to be no paid DLC for Halo 5. Uh, that's really smart. <laughs> I mean, there there's a lot of those really kind of nitpicky things where I'm like, wow, okay, that's really smart. So... Um, no, it's not going to be the most competitive Halo. Halo 5 is not going to be the most competitive game yet to be released. Um, I'd say that might be Comet Evolved, uh, just because the skill curve is so insane with that game. And Halo 2 Classic is also really skill curved. I think the more you, you, uh, add ease of use to a game, um, while that is becoming something that's very important with games nowadays, making movement super fluid and super easy, I think that also integrating things into a game that are more skill-based, which I have seen some of that in Halo 5, like nading weapons to yourself with plasmas and and really cool jumps in Halo 5 that you can do that I, you know, that a lot of people I don't think know about yet. But I think ultimately Halo 5 is much less of a skilled game than other Halo games. Um, this even comes down to the shot registration, where it's easier to kill people um, at range. It's just easier. Um, I don't really know how to explain that. It just is. The kill time is faster. I uh, played the beta a lot, and uh, yeah, that's just my opinion. Um, that doesn't mean I'm not going to play the game. I just think it's going to be more casual of an experience, and I think it's going to be up to the community and their feedback to 3 for 3 to really make them change the competitive game types to be something that is truly competitive and truly interesting to watch instead of being their own uh, cop-out version of what competitive should be or could potentially be. So that's just my opinion, and that is actually the end of the list of questions that this person sent me. Um, hopefully, again, this Halo documentary come out. I might be a part of it. I don't know, and I'll put it in the description down below. Uh, thank you for asking me uh, these questions, and I hopefully in the next Genesis Inbox in video, I will, add, I will be asking myself questions that you from the community have asked me and a whole list that I have actually compiled and I have enough questions to make another episode, episode four, but uh, I'll hopefully see you in that episode or whatever video I make next. Thank you guys for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you in the next capture or whatever I end up recording. Peace.